Happy solstice. So solstice energies are always significant. They typically indicate some kind of transition. But now in 2020, we're looking at this winter solstice and we are looking at something really monumentally transformative. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the energies of this winter solstice of 2020. And pretty much kind of like what it is, what's happening, and some guidance around it. If you don't know me, my name is Ona Christie. I'm a visionary artist. So today we're just going to take you into the studio because I've had some paintings that are coming through that really help to explain these energies. So if go ahead and click like and subscribe if you're you know, already fascinated with this um, because we're looking at Owl Woman here who's coming forward. And this is probably going to be the first of at least two videos <laughs> because there's other, other spirit animals that are coming through also that I want to address as well. But um, I think there's enough with Owl, just with Owl coming through. So we're going to start there. Um, and this image came through in a session that I did with a person. I do energy work as well. It's like visionary work. And she, this is shared by, um, with, with the client's permission because our woman just really just, she's so powerful here. And it felt like there was something more, more than just personal. She gave me a personal message and I'm sure, you know, she's got personal messages for the client, but I think for the collective, she's also really coming forward. So I did some inquiries. Um, I work with the Akashic Records and do, you know, just kind of work with it within my journal. And so I did some inner inquiries around this, which I'm going to share in a little bit. But first I want to just explain a little bit about these energies of the solstice right now. And the reason, one of the reasons that it's, it's such a monumental event is that we are looking at what's known as a great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn happening this year. This is something that happens every 20 years and it's the expansive, you know, that's the two biggest planets in our solar system, expansive Jupiter, which is all about kind of a prosperity, abundance, <laughs> and that kind of thing, and Saturn, which is more of a constrictive energy, right, your limits and so forth. So when they're coming together, you know, that, that can indicate uh, a transition or a change. It's sort of like the old king, uh, you know, representing Saturn being displaced by the new king coming in as, as Jupiter. And so this kind type of transition, like I said, happens every 20 years, but for every 200 years, it's going to shift elements. So for the past couple hundred years, it's been in earth signs. And now finally we're shifting into an air sign. We're shifting into not just any air sign, but the, but the air sign of Aquarius. Okay, so this is really talking about radical change and radical change that's almost like a breath of fresh air, right? So Aquarius indicates it's the sign of innovation, uh, it's associated with vision and philanthropy, humanitarianism, um, you know, all these kind of <laughs> expansive ideas. Um, it's very innovative. And so this is, it, really indicating a huge, huge shift and transition. And as all we, we all know, we're all going through this planetary ascension process. Um, and this really indicates kind of like this huge tipping point into this, what's known as the age of Aquarius, right? And the last time that this particular conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn happened in the sign of Aquarius was in 1405. And that was shortly before it was like the dawning of the Renaissance, right? When we went from the Middle Ages with all the chaos and stuff that happened there and into this age of reason and expansion. Now the, um, the Renaissance, like that it didn't become the full-blown renaissance until, until quite a few years after that particular event. So this doesn't mean that we're going to be suddenly seeing this, you know, and we're not going to be dancing the streets, you know, with the hippies, Age of Aquarius, yay, 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 right? It's, 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 we may not actually see the manifestation of this uh, for, you know, 50, 100 years, whatever, but this is the seeds that are being sown. 
All right, so it is, you know, it is a reason for celebration, even if we don't necessarily can't expect to see it immediately, although we may, because things are really accelerated compared to where they were, you know, back then, if you may have noticed that time does seem to be accelerating. Um, the other thing that I was given to relay about this energy right now in the solstice, and by the way, if you're coming to this video later, um, these are energies, this is such a monumental shift that this energy is going to be around for quite a while, as well as if you're drawn in by the owl symbolism, there's probably something here in this message for you personally, um, you know, with its owl. So stick around, it doesn't have to be right here at this point. Um, and this leads into the next thing I was told to relay, this is... Um, the, my guides were showing me that this particular time right here around the, the solstice 2020 is like a nexus of time and space. So it's really less like we think we experience things in linear time, but it's really more of like of a state of mind that the earth is kind of traveling through. <laughs> so it's the best I can explain it right now. So if we think of this nexus, um, and they were showing me the nabi, which is the nabi point, which is the navel, and it's uh, a nerve plexus around the navel, navel point where all these nerves converge, and it corresponds with the solar plexus chakra. Okay, so this is sort of like in time space, we're at this knobby point. And um, so we may be seeing, uh, probably you may have already been experiencing like timelines shifting, all sorts of timelines converging. This can be a time where we can really access a lot of kind of past lives, ancestral lines, all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, you may be accessing alternate planes because it's there's this energetic hub that we're in right here, right now. And like I said, it's not it's not constrained to just this linear time, right? But so you may come to this video many years in the future and you may be tapping into that same kind of energetic um, kind of happening, happening for you particularly because um, you can access this energy from wherever. It's just, it's, like I said, it's sort of more of like a state of mind. Um, all right, so what about the solar plexus chakra? This is the, kind of the seat of will, right? And it, if, if it's a healthy solar plexus chakra, you're gonna, it's going to result in a clear sense of self and purpose. So this is super important, okay, because what's happening right now is it, it's like this coming into one's own truth, okay? There's a lot of people right now that are experiencing this, and as a collective, we're experiencing this. This is kind of like the, the Christ self, an aligning with the higher self, right? The truth of your, your, your own soul. Um, so when you have a really, really strong solar plexus, it allows you, it's like the, um, it, it allows you to evolve, okay? So bringing balance to this area equates to the capacity for evolve, and it's also connected with seeking activities, such as like anywhere from job hunting to a vision quest to the seeking of inner peace, right? So a lot of what this energy has to do with is really seeking your own truth and seeking to, you know, your calling. And a lot of what a woman brought in and her wisdom has to do with, you know, either illuminating that or um, she gives some guidance to assist with that, okay? So first of all, let me show you a woman again. And uh, she's this beautiful, and you've noticed that she has roots, right? She's almost like a tree woman, even though she's owl, and that the heart is prominent. And then she's got this big kind of halo moon shape behind her. So I'm just going to read to you the guidance that I got. And uh, I asked about her significance. And here's what I was given. Rooted strongly, yet bearing wings, Owl woman signifies the wisdom that awakens through grounded seeking of the unknown. She presides over ritual, over ceremony. Grounded in solid practice, she opens her heart 
With humility, she remains aware and is not afraid to look into the heart of darkness, knowing that she may find the lost parts of herself there. Now I'm working on a couple other paintings that are really pertaining to this time right now and it, it has to do with that so stay tuned for those videos. Um, but okay so she is not afraid to look into the heart of darkness knowing that she may find the lost parts of herself there and when she does she welcomes them back through the portal of her heart digesting the experiences retaining that which nourishes, nourishes the soul and rejecting the rest. Our woman aligns with the moon. She understands what it means to cycle with the ebb and the flow of the seasons. In ceremony, she smooths the way. On softened wings, she glides through the night, listening for the wisdom of the heart. Okay, and I'm going to share with you, I kind of tuned into Owl Woman, and um, she has a message for us all. But before I do, I want to just kind of share this painting because I was going to paint our woman the, the image that I just showed you and so I started doing that and kind of like it, it just halfway through I saw this owl face in there and so our woman was in here and it was sort of like she had some trees and stuff behind her but then the the owl face came forward really really strongly for me I could just sort of see that with my third eye and so this is the painting that it ended up wanting to be um, and so just tuning into energy, the energies of this painting, which I call Owl Spirit, um, she says, listen, listen, listen for the guidance. D distractions abound. There will be many parties competing for your attention, your allegiance, seeking to partake in your energy. Look through the illusion. Stand back and watch. Remember that true guidance often speaks softly above the clamor. Energy is all around you. You can't help but affect your surroundings. Your surroundings will affect you. The stronger you can hold to your own frequency, the greater the light you will shine from your being, and this will assist in illuminating the darkness around you. Remember that this may make you unpopular at times. Therefore, it can be wise, like the owl, to stay aloof, rest above the fray. Bide your time. Stay silent. Let those who seek wisdom come to you. Rather than offering unsolicited advice that may trigger others in their illusion, simply embody the light that you are. As you find peace in your own being, it will radiate out from you naturally, thus assisting in raising the vibration all, all around you. Okay? And by the way, I think these are energies that this guy represents that I, I think can resonate with a lot of us. So if you're finding that this image really resonates with you, if you're looking for a reminder, kind of to stay in your truth, <laughs> um, I'm going to leave the link to this painting below. I'm going to offer the original as well as prints for sale. So just uh, if that calls to you. And so that was the message from the owl. And here's a, the first message that came through from Owl Woman herself. And she says... It has come full circle. We are beginning another cycle. You can choose to step forward anew or go down with the old. If you choose to go forward, prepare to strip yourself down. Travel light, your heavy baggage will do you no good here, and the more you cling, the more it will weigh you down until you have no choice but either to sink to the depths or let go and realize that you had wings all along. She says, remember the four directions. Your place is in the center, in the heart. Ground yourself in the ways of your ancestors and never forget you are of the earth. But look up and prepare to fly because you are also children of the stars. Okay, so a lot there. I'm just going to give you a few of the, the kind of the key words that I brought out of this, the kind of things to... to focus on here one inner truth huge okay and this is a beautiful time you know if you're drawn to this video or if you're here in these energies of the solstice 2020 a beautiful time to be really seeking that inner truth and feeling into that inner truth okay and um observing observation is another one discernment 
purification and release so you've got to be very clear on what's yours what's not and really release get rid of whatever is it may be trying to cling to you or you're clinging to it it's time to let it go if it's not really your truth um, non-attachment and non-involvement it's really coming into yourself going with the flow and respecting the natural rhythms and that brings us to ceremony because I think this is one huge key to this coming back coming back she says coming back to the ways of the ancestors if you look at every single traditional society it's infused with ceremony all the way through and this is what keeps us <laughs> what keeps a society sane what keeps a person sane is a sense of ceremony it brings us a sense of belonging it helps us to realize our place right our place in the world and from that place that rootedness that groundedness that's when we can really feel into and rise strong in our own energies okay and lastly uh, one thing that I that I think segues into this beautifully is um, I was uh, interviewed recently for a blog and uh, this beautiful fellow Pisces who interviewed me and she's from the Hindu tra tradition and we were talking about owl and uh, she said it was um, interesting to her with the owl because it is um, associated with the goddess Lakshmi and this is the Hindu goddess of love and beauty and abundance and prosperity and wealth okay and really associated with the owl the owl is her vehicle so she rides an owl and Lakshmi is the consort or the um, the wife of Lord Vishnu who is um, part of the Hindu Trimurti the the, the Trinity um, in, in, in Hinduism this three gods and he is considered the preserver so he rides an eagle and there's a association between owl and eagle I will put um, I don't know if she's published the blog yet but when she does I'll put that below and you can kind of see that because I think she may address that in the blog but um, Lord Vishnu is the preserver and so we're looking at um, I think we're right now experiencing a lot of these energies of dissolution um, kind of like this Shiva the destroyer <laughs> happening as the old the old king right is is being laid to rest or dissolving um, you know old structures starting to crumble and we're gonna see the new ones coming up um, but this is kind of the dawning or the bringing in of the preserver energy the the sustaining right and so we're going to be looking at moving into an age of sustainability like I said this may not happen quite yet but we are sowing the seeds and as star seeds right as light workers light bringers um, we're the ones who are actually we are the seeds right who are being you know seeding this new energy onto the earth so really important to take care of yourself listen to that inner wisdom right and because we are the seeds of this new energy and as we embody this new energy and no matter what's happening around you you know you've got that within yourself you've got that expansive beauty love right um, abundance I and mean, we're gonna start to see I think a lot of us as light workers we're gonna start to see increasing abundance this year right as you know as we begin to listen more and more to our own inner guidance and embody our own truth that abundance is going to be magnetically attracted to us okay so 2021 could for a lot of us we start to see a little bit more of this abundance and loosening up and love and beauty coming in um, and then finally if you notice that Vishnu's vehicle is the eagle and he's gripping the snake okay and so stay tuned because my next video is likely to talk a lot about snake energy or something we're seeing a lot here and I've got a painting in the works that addresses that so if you haven't subscribed yet to hit that subscribe button thank you so much for watching I love you all and we'll catch you again soon